So what else can we talk about? Well, um, I can start saying just a few words about what I'm going to say later on. So I'm so happy to be here again. I just checked my passport. This is the sixth time I'm, I'm going to, um, to St. Petersburg to message to men. Um, and now I know I can tell you the first times it was very difficult to get all the papers ready for the visa application in Copenhagen. But now I know the people in, 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 in the visa office and I just go and give it and say hello, are you going again? Yeah. And uh, that's, that's uh, very nice. And um, um, what we are going to do here today and tomorrow is learning from each other, actually. Uh, we are all in the same boat, more or less. We make documentaries, we love documentaries, we write about documentaries, we go and see documentaries, uh, or we stay at home and see documentaries. So um, that's, that's, that's the common ground. Uh, we have differences, I'm sure, and we're going to hear about that during, during uh, today and tomorrow. Um, we come from the Nordic um, environment, which is completely different from the Russian environment in terms of, of um, financing, structure, etc. But basically, basically, we just want to make good documentaries for an audience. Because uh, the good news is that there is an audience. Um, as you can see, when you go to, to Belikan, you can see it in many, many festivals around. And uh, there are many initiatives where uh, audiences are reached in, in other ways than the classical one, which is up on the screen, on the big screen. So um, these are the, the things that we are going to, to uh, touch upon, actually. Um, why don't I just continue my, my wisdom speech? Huh? I'll do that. I mean, I've already done it. Uh, so, well, um, let me just say I was going to make an introduction and I've already started that. And then uh, I would like to say that I've been asked to, to say something about, uh, let's say, the state, the state of the art. And it's very important to me to stress the word art. Because what we are talking about are, well, some, some people will call it artistic documentaries. Uh, if you think that's too snobbish or highbrow, we can call them creative documentaries. And just remember that what we are talking about is a tiny niche in the big documentary landscape. There are many other documentaries, court documentaries, nature documentaries, historical documentaries, uh, journalistic uh, documentaries which are more or less in, in the repertoire style. And uh, these are not the films that we are referring to and that we will see clips from here uh, in, in today and tomorrow. And then, just a second. I was asked to say something. I mean, there's a little, there's a two, two liner here, saying the following: So much has changed in the last ten years, and so much will change during the next five years. The most essential will stay, but how will documentaries react to the changes and new challenges? I have no idea. So I'm not going to answer that. But luckily, my colleague. As a moderator here, Cecilia Bolvinken, who's sitting there, she'll stand up and wave to you. She's from EDN, European Documentary Network. She's 30 years uh, younger than me, so I expect that she can give answers to, to that question, actually. Uh, back to my little talk and to my bullet points on the paper. Um, well, state of the art. Um, what does it mean to be a documentary producer, documentary director? Why do you choose that profession? I mean, it can't be because you think that you will be 
rich or wealthy or whatever. It's out of some kind of addiction, I would say. Um, passion. Uh, because if I should say the state of the art for documentaries make, documentary making and documentary distribution is that it is difficult and it is complicated. And then comes the but. But compared to when I was 30 years younger, it's much better today to reach the audience because of the technical, the technological possibilities uh, which we're going to touch upon. There was no online when I started in the Danish Film Board in 1975. Um, I was going around with 16 mil reels. Uh, showing films in Denmark, and that was that was the possibility, and the way that we reached the audience was through the good old post. Packages with film reels were sent by the Royal Danish Mail to schools and libraries and uh, cinemas, etc. That was the way, and it functioned pretty well. But it was the only way, actually, to to reach the audience, and and the uh, the. Um, in the other end, where the film should be screened, there should be a, a projector, and there should be somebody who could manage the projector. I'm a technical analphabet, but I can assure you that one thing I can do is I can do a 16 mil projector. If you have one and you want to see a 16, just call me. Anyway, um, that's one thing, the technical thing. And then I would say that, that um, and maybe you will shake your head, what the hell is this man saying? I think these are golden years for the creative documentary. Um, I'm watching so many documentaries, I'm watching so many good documentaries, uh, and uh, I can, because I have been around for many years, I can see that, that the genre as such has developed in a good way. It is no more, I mean, now we're talking aesthetics also, it is no more only in brackets, because I still respect that way of making films, it's not only observational documentaries. Is that a word which is familiar in, 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 in Russian as well? Yeah. Uh, you can also call it direct cinema or cinema verite, all these uh, words which are being used. It's not only uh, observational any longer. It is now allowed, and I would say again in brackets, it is allowed to play uh, with the genre, to introduce some stylistical elements from, from fiction films. And um, it's not, I don't think it's a very good, very, very good word, but many people are talking about hybrid documentaries, the mix of observational and fictional documentaries. And uh, last night at the wonderful opening, one of the uh, persons who have been talking against, I would say, against the observational documentary being the only way was here and was given a fantastic award for his fantastic work uh, through many years, Werner Herzog, of course. He's the he's one who, uh, there was a film historical event some years ago where he was standing like I do now and down on the first row there were all the observational documentarians from America sitting like uh, Pennebaker, Albert Maisels, uh, Leacock, etc. All these fantastic persons who have really been doing the fly on the wall or whatever you want to, to call it. And he said, "Ah, you think you think that you have, with his German accent, I cannot uh, uh, make it like him. But you think that this is the only way? No. You think that you are getting to the truth by doing observational documentaries. This is nonsense. Absolutely nonsense. And of course, he's right in a way because he is right because everything depends on how you." put the camera and where you put it and what you want to achieve. Um, I hope that we can have a good discussion on festivals here. 
There are several festival people. Uh, who are festival people here, by the way? I didn't say that. Ah, good. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Good, uh, because I think it's a very interesting development in festivals uh, during the last years, where festivals uh, come in and uh, t put on, let's say, a political agenda as well. Let me give you a couple of, of examples. I was uh, this summer in uh, Kosovo, uh, in the south, uh, for a festival called Doku Fest, uh, a festival with a, a very good program in a small, uh, small city. And um, they had everywhere in the streets of, of uh, Pritzrin, the city where it took place, roses, which were formed, so the spelling was corruption. The theme of the festival was corruption. And I think it was quite courageous because, I mean, uh, they were not referring to corruption in, in all the other countries, but Kosovo, corruption. They wanted to raise this question, and they, um, they did it in the way that they had uh, film screenings, film programs referring to corruption, power, mm -hmm. politics, whatever. Uh, and um, at the same time, uh, they had uh, afternoon discussions on the theme itself by people who were not film people, but who, had, who knew something about um, corruption and investigating of corruption, etc. People from the UN and the EU, but also independent people were there. I think that was quite interesting, and that's a new role. I would say that uh, it also happened in, um, in uh, and that's closer to you, uh, in March in, uh, in Kiev at the Docu Days. Um, they had their logo was bells. And uh, what they were playing on was the bear within us. And that was, of course, Soviet Union, communists, communism, etc. How do we get the bear out of our hearts or whatever? That was what they did. And they also had, had thematic programs uh, going in that uh, direction just asking you f to think about and hey, let's have some, uh, some um, comments on that when festival people are talking. Is that a role of, the of, of festivals or should they leave it to other people? Festivals going into being cultural slash political, um, making statements, also Doc Leipzig festival in Germany, in the eastern part of Germany, they have taken a very clear, open standpoint uh, against the right-wing movement in, in, in that part of, of, of Germany. Okay, I'm talking about festivals which are, of course, uh, enormously uh, important. Um, but most of the time I don't watch films on a big screen. I'm sitting at home with my MacBook, opening the MacBook, because I need to see a lot of films, and how do I get them? I get them through links, Vimeo links, I watch them there. And this is, of course, not the optimal uh, situation, but this is how I watch uh, documentary, and this is how many other people also, also people who are not in the, in, in the business as such, uh, watch documentaries. And this is VOD, we are going to hear about that. It's, it's many other, th um, other things, like uh, Cecilia coming from EDN, they now have documentary of the Mons, which is going online, yes, yeah, I mean, everything online, this is uh, a way to, to watch uh, films, and, um, well, that's how it is, and I would never, five years ago, if anyone had told me that one day tour you will be watching films on this one, I would have said, no way, I would not watch films on, on this small thing, why should I do that? I mean, this is spoiling uh, the whole adventure of watching films, but I have done that also. Um, so, I mean, the te technical possibilities are here, uh, and this is also what we are going to 
to um, talk about in this. So um, I hope we will learn a lot from each other and please be active. Uh, Cecilia and I will be going around with a microphone. Please be active and, and uh, be prepared because sometimes if you don't say something, I'll go down and give you the microphone. So I will force you to say something because it's too boring if, if it continues like this, one person talking to, to the whole thing. So welcome and have a good conference.